Because women will give you a window. And if you don't jump in that window, they think you're a fucking pussy. Yo, what's up, Square Pimp Brigade? On this episode, we have comedian Ahmed Ahmed. He's here. We discuss uh, not being disrespected, uh, uh, being single, and how it's important to maintain it and like what you do. Women sinking their periods and why you have to act in the moment or lose on the back end. Mm. It's always a goodie. Uh, don't forget to follow us on, uh, to like and share us on YouTube channel, Man School 202. Check out my man school, my my, part, my uh, YouTube channel is DanteNero.com. I'm putting up stuff on that. Don't forget to follow the Patreon at www.patreon.com slash manschool202. And for consultations, Harry, where can they go to get you? If they want consultations from me, they can email me at advicefromharry at gmail.com. And uh, yeah, if go. You want, me, you want me to go to dantenero.com and click on consult, yo. Uh, I love y'all, man. Thanks for supporting us, bro. Um, the best, the best fans in the world. We are out. Let's get it. I'm not an alpha male. I'm not a beta male either. I'm just a better man. Better man. Well, put your happiness first, cause if you don't, they won't. Yo, 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 what up, yo? GYBB, get your balls back. WWDD, what would Dante do? The sexual revolution is being podcasted, and I am excited. Um, because we have a special guest today. Now, I might have said that 600 times before, but this time I mean it. <laughs> First and foremost, Harry, what's popping? Would you ready to rock and roll? I want to uh, get into this. You know I'm ready to rock and roll. I'm born ready to rock and roll, Dante. That's how I live my life. Every day I get up, I go rock and or roll, and then I check one off, and I do it. That's how I am. So let me let me introduce the, the guest today, because here's the thing. Uh... Uh, my guest today is a dude who I've always respected, always liked. We met like here and there and uh, always dug him, but we just weren't in the in the vicinity, you know, like just just not in the vicinity together. And this weekend we ended up out at the stress factor. And we really got to connect. And it was it was uh, I mean, it was, it was a dream come true. It was a dream oh, come true. You're you're amazing. You know what's so funny? Whenever somebody starts out a sentence, you know, describing somebody with, so so here's the thing with a man. Wait, first of all, <laughs> let me just say this. Give it it's a either gonna be man. good or it'll be really bad. Hmm. Uh, <laughs> so, so here's the thing. Here's the thing. See, no, we did, man. We bonded hardcore uh, at the Stress Factory. It was great working with you, watching you perform. You know, jumping on. On your and Godfrey show, that was cool of him, and, and yeah, really yeah. Let, me, let me do that. And that club's amazing. If you guys are watching this or listening, that Stretch Factory. Well, both of them actually, uh, Bridgeport yeah, yeah, and yeah. Brunswick. But yeah, yeah, he's got a he's got a good gold mine going on out there. Vinny Brand, shout out to Vinny Brand. Um, yeah. Annoying as fuck, but I love that dude. For some reason, I love that dude. <laughs> he's great, man. That That's going to be on Vinny's happy. tombstone, by the way. Annoying as fuck, but still loved. I love that dude, but yeah. still beloved, right? It's still beloved. Uh, yeah, it, it was weird because, um, you know, I always respected him, and I saw him, you know, like we went cross paths, what's up, what's up, but never really, and we really got a chance to hang out this weekend, which was really, really dope. Uh, we had so much fun, and I, something that, you know, Harry, like one of those things that, uh, um, you know, like you... I say the great thing about being a comic is that you could be with three, four motherfuckers that you've never met before, hang out and just click and just laugh. Oh, we, oh, we laughed. Uh, we did yeah, we'll impressions laugh. of Dane Cook and Sebastian impressions all weekend. <laughs> this, this, this will come back to haunt me. <laughs> no, nah, man, we laughed our asses off, especially in the green room. Oh yeah, you know uh -huh. it wasn't like necessary. We we sung karaoke. We, we, we did a lot of did a lot of activities going on. Yeah, this I was really comfortable, Harry, because you know I don't yeah. do karaoke. No, I've never and seen I, you do karaoke. You got no. a great voice too, man. Thanks, bro. I did a little. Whoa. I hit him with Sinatra, bro. I hit him with. Uh, he did the little you, you did Johnny. Was it Johnny Cash? Johnny Cash. did Johnny yeah. Cash. So, so look at Harry's face because he's like, 
You, what, what, what? I've you, never seen no, Dante man. do karaoke yeah. or sing Johnny Cash. He's got pipes. <laughs> He's got pipes. Believe it or not, he could sing. We yeah, we, we, I mean, so <laughs> Harry, this is how much fun we had that I was doing fucking yeah. karaoke at fucking four o'clock in the morning. Jesus, in the club. what a hang. Yeah. Fuck, man. Yeah, Stress Factor is great. I don't think ever seen me do karaoke. No, I haven't. Years. But it, which is weird because I have seen you ride a unicycle, though. So it's not like you haven't done some <laughs> weird things that are out of character, but just karaoke, I just haven't crossed that off the list yet. Well, and that's the great thing about me as a Frank. You're, oh, there's always another layer. Every time you peel yeah. like a layer, there's, there's another layer. Um, it's really dope. Is that, is a, that Dante uh, juggling a bunch of chainsaws? What? Yep, that's him. <laughs> that's him. Been, oh, man, he's been juggling for a long time, so... Um, it was weird because you know, I'm 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 at we were talking and I'm at is like you know a lot of motherfuckers were trying not like they're not fucking with me. He was you know with that this was kind of the lead off. The I'm was like there's a lot of dudes that are turning against me and they're trying to say I'm this and I'm that and whatever. And and I was like, I and I heard even I had heard some stuff like and it's I'm not even in the circle. <laughs> What'd you hear? But, Let's just, uh, yo, uh, I'm at his cussing people out, and they, which I don't know. Here's the you thing, know, though. If know. Ahmed, <laughs> when you hear that Ahmed is cursing people out, I'm like, well, what did they do to yeah. deserve yeah. the cursing? That's what I want to know. Yeah, and by the way, yeah. I'm allowed to curse. <laughs> you are allowed to curse. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, if, so you're yeah. if you're gonna get mad at me for expressing my opinion and throwing in, you know, fuck or shit or whatever. It's like. Mm-hmm. It is what it is, but I get it. Look, everybody has their perception of you, right? And all you can do is be the own version of how you perceive yourself. Right. And, and trust me, I'm not perfect. God knows that. I've fucked up many a time and, and made mistakes. And, you know, you try to learn from them or you stick to your ground and say, I'm just going to be me. And what you see is what you get. You know what I mean? Because yeah. Ahmed is a, uh, a really nice dude because I hit Ahmed. My experience with Ahmed was out of the blue. I'd never met him, never talked to him. I was in L.A. with my girl. And during the pandemic, there's not a lot of shows. So I'm just like begging people, where can I go? They go, just hit up Ahmed. He might. He does some things. He's doing some outdoor shows. I hit him up out of the blue. Uh, he actually watched my clip, said, yeah, you're funny. Come on. Threw me on a show. Never met me, never had a conversation with me, but was just, just generous enough to throw me on a show that you were producing, I think, out in Venice with Kevin Nealon headlining or something at the moment. You know, threw me up. It was just a very sweet gesture. So my experience is that he, he's a great guy, a nice guy. So, again... Well, when- I, you, you are funny, and I do appreciate you. And, and you know, for me, it was it's it's how people approach something. You know what I mean? Mm. You didn't... Your your message was super kind and thoughtful, and like, you know, it, it didn't seem a lot. You'd be su- surprised how many comics reach out to me mm-hmm. and they're like, "Hey, put me up," so, you know, <laughs> <laughs> they're like, or like, you know, give me a spot next week. Like, they don't, there's no grace, grace and approach. politeness. But yeah. it's funny because that I've done that with a lot of other people, and it's not worked. It, it's you'd you'd be surprised how often the nice approach too. doesn't work. You know, well, I do it too. I, I mean, I, I manage myself. I'm my own agent, so I, I'm constantly emailing and, and messaging clubs, trying to send the, the perfect, quick, three four liner about wanting to headline yeah. the club and then a- attaching, you know, because how many submissions are they getting daily? Um, yeah. and, and I think my, you know, to be honest, my relevance kind of dipped a little bit. Um, mm. Before the pandemic, when I moved to Asia, I kind of disappeared from Hollywood and moved to Malaysia for two years. And then mm. <laughs> then it came back right before the pandemic. So there was a good five years like I was kind of dipped out of the scene. Uh, well, what's the dude that, that owns a club out in Malaysia that married some beautiful psychiatrist model? Malaysian comic. Ball head, kind of chub- chubby. Um, oh, Harith is Skandar. Yes, Skandar. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a hater. Really? Oh, I love yeah. this. When I got to Malaysia, really? he, when I got to Malaysia, he so he used to open for me. He was my opening act back in like twenty say twenty. Uh, shit, I want to say twenty ten. 
I did my first mm -hmm. big 1200 seat, you know, show in, in right in downtown Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. It was like a big thing because I was the first American comic to come and, mm -hmm. and do that. And then later on, bigger acts came. Russell Peters, Kevin mm -hmm. Hart, Jimmy Carr, Margaret mm -hmm. Cho, like name it. Fluffy went out there a couple of times. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> my, you know, uh, uh, then they had other acts like David Blaine or like, you know, mm -hmm. anyhow, um, the people that I was working with who were kind of managing me, who knew him and were friends with him, tried to, you know, get me to get spots at his club. And he was like, mm -hmm. and he, he just pretty much denied me. Um, and he's just kind of a weirdo. I mean, I don't know if he watches Netflix special. It's not, um, yeah, it's not worthy of anything funny. I, I, for me, well, it, what happened? I think he had a, there was a contest in LA where yeah, he won. A it was the funniest famous. person. It was Jam Jamie Massad is Laugh Factory, the funniest person in the world contest, right? Right. Let me grab my coffee. Give me one second. No Here worries. Dante, you had you had an experience with the the guy. Uh, although you didn't have a negative experience, you just didn't think he was that interesting, if I recall, right? Well, I, you know what or, happened. Was, <laughs> you know what it was. Hold on, now I'm remembering the story. He had some show he was doing, uh, I think, and then he had drawn a crowd or something. But for whatever reason, the club had you close or go on before him, so and I, you completely so ruined this, this, this evening <laughs> by killing so and destroying. Was, I got a call. There's a Filipino comic that runs stand-up New York. He goes, man, Dante, I want you, you know, can you, Esconder is coming up. I want you to, you know, could you close? I mean, he's going to go up early, but there's like 60, 60 Malaysians that are coming to see him because he had gotten so famous in Malaysia, right? That he was in New York and 60 people came. So I, had, I, I got the gig and I watched the special. And I was like, mm. right. So I was, I was, I was like, mm. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I, you know, at, at there's times because. <laughs> hey, Dante, how are you? So, what, what, what face did you make? This one, mm. the, the pouty, the pouty girl. Mm. I'm full. I'm a mean girl. So Dante, mean girl. You mean girl them? A mean girl. <laughs> Mean for more pouty. More pouty. Uh, so he goes, uh, so he goes, yeah, but you know, you, you can close it, but they're probably going to leave after him because they want to see him, right? And I was like, yeah, whatever, whatever. So I watched the special. So I went there with the, like, I was like, you know, like I'm on that, you know how you get that thing on it where you're like, Yo, I'm better than these motherfuckers. Like, why? I, can't I get a break somehow? Can somebody <laughs> give me a fucking break? Like, I mean, this motherfucker got this, this hour special. Like, and, and we're talking about, I mean, he clearly hadn't been doing it long because it's like, even when I watch, I'm, you know, when you watch Ahmad and he's working out, I, when you watch Ahmad and he's working something out, this stage legs, there's that, you know, that. 20 mm. 30 year yeah. thing that even well, even if it's if it's new there's it's, it's still got legs you know the reason the reason one of the reasons he got a stand up special from Netflix was because at the time Netflix was passing out deals to Asian comics uh -huh. like around the region and Malaysia was one of the countries that they 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 greenlit well three actually there's a guy named there's Harith Iskandar there's a guy named Kevin J uh, and all he did is do other people's material. <laughs> oh, Jesus. And then, um, and then the third one is this guy named Faka Faz, but he's out of Singapore. And, you know, again, he kind of, they, they kind of, you know, they stopped. They were just passing they, out. Well, no, well, Netflix, yeah, Netflix stopped giving, you know, uh, specials out. They had a division that was like producing Asian comics. Uh -huh. and they basically pulled the division because the people that they chose, you yeah. know, ate it. It's trash. It's trash. So, so I I came, I showed up, and it was a bunch of, it was a 
place was like a Tuesday, full of Malaysians. He goes. The up place was done. lousy with Malaysians. It was. It was it's no, dude. He was in Malaysia. He's like. He's sort of like. Uh, I don't want to compare him to any great American comic, but <laughs> as far as, as far as popularity is concerned, you mm-hmm. know, he would be equivalent to like the Russell Peters of of Malaysia. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's not selling out theaters or not uh, theaters, okay. like, uh, arenas. But he'll do like big, you know, a couple thousand seat shows and stuff. But then he opened up his own club. Yeah, and his yeah, club. I heard that. It basically looks like the Laugh Factory with, with different colors. Oh Jesus! Okay. And Jamie Jamie Masada was, from what I understand, was was about to sue him or tried to sue him for stealing like his, uh, oh. you know, logo branding, copyright branding. Yeah. In, yeah, yeah. Uh, intellectual intellectual property, property. Yeah, you know the just the branding and the, the theme. Like if you walk into his club, it literally looks like the Laugh Factory. Um, well, I heard they had a Asi- they had a Malaysian Michael Richards open up too, and I thought that was too much for them <laughs> to, to to do it at the Malaysian Laugh Factory. The, yeah. he, um, so I, I go I go up after him, and I like went like vengeance like. Oh, you don't want to give me a Netflix special? <laughs> like, oh. And just uh I was like I was hitting so hard that he started he started fading like ghost like gives he ghost dad where he's like, oh I can't, where am I at? And I'm murdering to the point where, you know, like the people are there to see him, he leaves. He just leaves. Like he doesn't even want to meet and greet them after I finish. This, he just left them there, like, and they were like, "Well, where's Ascanda? We want autographs and pit." And he was just like, "Yo, I'm he out." Gone. So then I saw him at another club, and he was like, "Oh, you did really great. I, I'd love to have you at my club in Malaysia." And I was like, "Bet." And then he, was, then I felt bad because he invited me, but then he, he, he never uh, followed well, up. He never. Well, it's one of those never, things that's easy to say. Hey, Dante, if you're ever in Malaysia. Stop by the club. It's an easy thing to say because what are the odds you're going to be in Malaysia? He, he said, I would love to have you in the club. Let's make that, which is which is clearly different, but he never, mm. he never, you know, it's one of those things where you're, you're I mean, I was a younger comic and I was like, I'm going to Malaysia. No, you're not. Yeah. <laughs> no, you're, <laughs> so well, it's just, it was a, go ahead. No, I was going to say, so I, I'm at like, how do you, you know, Sometimes it's tough, a tough situation where you're, you try to be professional, you try to be a good person just in life, not even just in show business. How do you reconcile that with the fact that sometimes it just doesn't go your way, that sometimes being nice isn't rewarded? Sometimes it's just people step over you. Yeah, I mean, look, man, our industry, you know, life in general is tough right now. But our industry, especially the stand-up comedy world, it's, it's become so cutthroat as I've gotten older like when I first started doing stand up, it was for me, it was such an innocent time and it was such a fun time. Um, I still have fun, but like the politics and the negativity, and going back to what you were saying, you know, Dante, and on uh, mm. regard, like, so at LA and New York have two different comedy scenes, right? In right. New York, in New York, you know, everybody's just made a steal, what you see is what you get, right? And in LA, it's not. It's a bunch of fucking marshmallows. <laughs> you know, like, just soft, you know, cushiony. Mm, don't hurt me. Mm. Mm. <laughs> and and mm. and mm, help me, I'm poor. So 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 it's a, it's just like a guy like me who you Probably should be in New York. In New York, yeah. Just because I'm. You should be in New York. I'm a. I'm a. What you see is what you get. Black and white. That was guy. the first thing that I. That that was the first thing I thought of when I saw. I was like, this don't should be like. What are you talking about? Like, and then he's in LA. A lot of people in LA. Some think people I'm out. Mm. Oh man. No, I guess he's in that, LA. Like, cussing people out for being marsh. <laughs> mm, but being that, and, and then and then they go, well, what's wrong with? And I and so as soon as I heard that, it, like I didn't even, I didn't even. I was like, no, nah, that this don't. It, it like the you know, I'm I'm a big dude on on incongruency. Do you know what I mean? Like 
whenever things don't fit, it just I go, um, no, 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 that that doesn't fit. This dude is kind and he's and he's good. Then I mentioned Harry's name and he was like, yeah, Harry's funny. I love Harry, but like right away, oh, I was like, nah, come on, they, this nice, is, nice. this don't add up. But right? the problem is that but, it's just because you're nice doesn't mean you're a fucking pushover. That's the problem right. is people think that you're weak. And, and they or they way, or that you're stupid that you don't notice like no fucker right. I know what you just did right. whether I act on it is a whole other thing yeah and here's with me <clears throat> here's the score with me if I like snap or curse you out or get angry you know I'm not saying that's the right move but you have to get me there yeah I didn't just come out of the gate guns a blazing yeah. you're constantly uh, you know being disrespectful whether it's physically you know. Uh, figuratively, you know, literally, whatever the case is. Um, and so it's a matter of like kind of, you know, navigating through all the bullshit. And do you know, do you ignore the person that you feel like did you wrong or fucked you over? I'm getting better at that. But <laughs> younger, younger, I was always Captain Confrontational because I yeah. wanted to give people a piece of my mind. You know, I was also raised pretty strict you know muslim and the way we were taught as muslims was you know if somebody slaps you across the face you have the right and and the you know assertion obligation to slap, obligation to, to yeah. slap them right back not any harder not any weaker just the same <laughs> no i mean it's that's, yeah that's, i i that's get it yeah i understand yes, like, and, I, and, I know, and i know i know that's that could be looked at as a as a physical thing it's not always a physical thing it's more metaphorical, more uh, uh, figurative. It's like well, it's where we get the no, eye for an no, eye it thing. Is a, it right. is a physical thing. It definitely it is. can be. It can be. It has, I mean, look, I I haven't been in a scrap in many years, and I'm happy to say that. But there have been times when, yeah, it, it got physical. Somebody pushed you, or you know, tried to grab you, or some shit. You got to fight back. And I've also I've also watched, you know, just from afar, I've watched. I meant kind of produce things, like put things behind the scene and, and put other people on and, and create create projects that other people could eat with, right? And uh and and I, I always feel like that is, you know, that's a really different mentality for a dude to to be in that way. And it's just, just very this that was the first thing I thought was like he should be doing comedy again comedy in New York, you know. Um uh, but also probably with the production, the fact that you're doing your own production and stuff like that, um, it kind of you probably better out there anyway. But but I mean, you know, the motherfuckers are shady here too, but not in the same way. They they just won't fuck with you, and they you know they they don't they're not trying to be confrontational. You know what I mean? Very right. few because you could you you know you could catch them hands out here too. That's easy to do. But um, it was it was really really I really man I had a really good time hanging out with you and and, and Billy just fucking joking and laughing the whole weekend. Bobby. And I go, <laughs> yeah, Bobby, 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 and then we uh, and, and then yeah, Brandon, do that. We, we 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 did have a good, you know, comic friendly weekend. That doesn't always happen. Yeah. You know, sometimes well, you, you know what it does for me though. It does for me. It does for me, but because it's just, and I think I think it would happen for you more too, just being around because you you're a really genuine guy. It's like it's what you see, I what you, you get. Bro. I feel the yeah, same. I mean, guys, man. yeah, he good energy. Good and energy. And he was like, "Oh, you want to go up on my show?" So I was doing both rooms. He was like, and and it's just you know, Harry. It's like I'm um. You know, I always feel like I'm the I'm the the, the uncut cocaine that came in from Bolivia that nobody mm. that nobody <laughs> that I don't have no distribution. So it's like I always I always wanted a vet to see me. Sure. Because I don't think yeah. you know, well, you also you also I, want the respect of people you respect. You know, that's the other yes, thing. Yeah. yeah. Like it was. Yeah, well, yeah. We, you were you were slain, and um, yeah. oh, you know what? I got a funny uh, message I want to send you. Okay. Can I keep you guys here for a minute? Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, no worries. Yeah. No worries. Dante. Pull it up. Yeah, pull it up. It was uh, it was in my DMs. Where is it? 
He's going to pull up what Dante was. Yeah, I mean, you always want the respect of the people you, you like, so it, it means a had, lot. Yeah. We, we, we had um, the, our first show, we had a really rowdy group of like six, six like white dudes, six, six, seven white dudes who just would not stop talking the whole show. And so I walked in. Yeah, I walked into the into the big room where Godfrey and these guys are at, and I was like, "Yo, Dante, do you want to come do a, a guest spot um, on our show?" But you know, mind you, there's some there's some rowdy motherfuckers in the room. He's like, "Oh, I, you know how to sweat that? I got you." Mm. <laughs> so, long story short, it was it was get, it got to the point where they almost got kicked out. But right. the next day, the one of the guys and his wife came to see you guys. I don't know if you know that. Oh, really? No, I didn't know that. I'll screenshot her her Instagram. She has a picture of her and her husband sitting in the front row at your show. Okay. And the, the night the night after her husband and his friends clowned us. Yeah, yeah. So I get a message from her on, on Instagram. It says, I am so sorry about my husband and his friends interrupting your show on Thursday evening with, like, one of these emojis. Uh-huh. And then I... <laughs> one of the embarrassed face emojis. Yeah, and then I wrote back, it's okay, no one got her, LOL, but thank you so much for your thoughtful message. I appreciate that. Yeah. And then she wrote back late last night, like midnight, you are so gracious and warm. Thank you. Side note, I ended up rage texting all of the guys. Yeah. Each one of them each one of them apologized to me. So I am forwarding <laughs> So I am forwarding the message, dot, dot, dot. <laughs> they now understand how disrespectful and inappropriate it is to heckle someone doing their job. Hope to see one of your shows soon, exclamation point. <laughs> and bro, she's she's really good looking. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I don't think she wasn't coming from that angle. I just thought it was funny because... She, hey, you never like, know. No, no, I don't. I don't I, that was my... I was just joking around, but... But she she was like schooling her husband and his friends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And 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 I guess what probably happened was he came home that night. He was the only guy in the group that wasn't trying to help out too much. He was like more quiet. Yeah, yeah. And he probably went home to his wife, and she was like, "Hey, honey, how was the show?" And he was probably like, "Oh man, we fucking bashed this guy and heckled these comedians. We were the yeah, part yeah. of the show, and blah blah blah." And she was probably like. Oh. Because I think she's a comedy connoisseur. That's a no, hard. Yeah, like, yeah. That's hard. You ever have someone tell you a story and you're like halfway through, you're like, "This is horrible." You're the, <laughs> you're, you're horrible. Why are you telling can me you this? Believe, can you believe they did that to me? <laughs> so she probably she probably schooled her husband. You know, didn't sleep with them that night or whatever. Uh, and thought about it a little bit more the next day because that message was the next day about how she she raged. I've never even heard that. Rage, yes, yeah, the rage text. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and she was like, she was like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have sex with Ahmed just to show them. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, yeah. So Dante goes up, uh, Harry, and I just, you know, because first of all, first and foremost, you're you're one of the sweetest human beings I've ever met in my life. Thank but at you, first, man. but at first look, you know, you can come across very intimidating. There's no secret, you know what I'm saying? And and then you have a you have a deep booming voice, and your timing is on fire, and you're just very commanding. So when you went up on stage, I I saw the energy in the room shift a little shift. bit. Yeah, yeah. Because they were just like, oh shit, you know, like it's the joke you say, oh shit, the bouncer. Nobody told yeah, me the yeah, bouncer yeah. was going to be up here. <laughs> But uh, no, but you handled them really well, and then I kind of, I followed you and was able to kind of ride your wave a little bit. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, because it was just they came out, they were open up, and then you started killing at the end. You just started yeah. smashing them. Oh, one dude, he brought one dude up, and he was like, "Oh, you think you're funny? Come up and tell some jokes." And he goes, "You, I'll give you a minute to get a laugh." And the dude bombed and miserably. I, well, I originally bet him a thousand dollars. Oh, really? I didn't hear that I part. Said, I said, I said, if you can get eighty percent of this audience to laugh, I'll give you a thousand. If you don't, you owe me a thousand. He's like, all right. He came up all cocky and shit. I go, all right. I, I hit my stopwatch on the uh, on the phone, 
And I said, you got 60 seconds, go. And he grabbed the microphone and he said something super racist. Do you remember what it was? Yeah, he says, uh, can I do racist jokes? That's I the said, first thing he said. I said, yeah, stand up comedy, do whatever you want, you know? <laughs> can I do, can I do, ra- what? I like the politeness though. Hey, do you mind if I uh, do polite some racist. polite racist? His first, joke, his first joke was, what's the only time you point at a point and wink at a black guy? And <laughs> and, he, and he goes, like this and behind a gun and, like, and nobody laughs. Nobody yeah. laughs. It, it bombs how, so bad. Ahmed, just f- from a veteran comic standpoint, how excited did you get when he goes, "Can I? Can I be racist?" <laughs> like in your head, you go, "Oh, this is gonna be easy. This is gonna oh. be so <laughs> easy." The second he said that, I was like, I'm, "I got a thousand bucks coming to me in about sixty seconds." <laughs> and then he goes up on stage, Harry, and he fucking eats it for like the whole time. And then, yeah. and then I, I said, "All right." That's it. Your 60 seconds is up. And he tried to like pull the microphone away a little bit to get one more thing. And I was like, no, I'm in. Snatched it. I go, I go, get off. Give me that. I said, I said, now you know, now you know what it feels like. And he, and then his friends, like, like people kind of cheer. It was a moment of like clarity for people that it's not stand up comedy, all because you think you're. All because you think you're funny in front of your friends or the, your your coworkers, it doesn't mean it translates uh, to the stage. It just doesn't. No, it's a different thing entirely. Uh, I mean, you, you have any kid? You got kids? Nah, man. I mean, no. <laughs> <laughs> no. You got a girl? You got a steady girl, or no? You just no. kind of floating no. around. No, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just loving being single, man. I, I love, I you know, the world puts this like image on us in this and this sort of you know box that we have to live in you have to get married and sign the paper and do the thing and get the house like some people is i'm just are just not cut out for that and i'm not i never had that i'm a world traveler i'm a vagabond i live alone i ride alone you know i'm kind of like a cowboy and then you know i had i've had serious relationships in the past What's um, the longest? What's the longest you've ever had? On and off, or like in a straight run? Yes, straight run. <laughs> two and a half years, like two two and a half years, yeah. and it was long distance. You lived in Canada, so that was, you know, kind of hard. And then it got to the point where her parents, she's Lebanese, and mm-hmm. Ar- Arab parents, you know, you're not supposed to date. You either get engaged. Yeah, and that's that's the man you're going to be with for the rest of your life, or you're not going out on random dates every weekend, kind of thing, you know. Right, right, right. So we, we not, dated. You're not increasing your body count. You're not trying to get your body count up either. Yeah, and so we dated on and off, well, m- mostly on because it was long distance and it was it was a little rough. And then uh, her parents were like, you know, he has to ask you for your hand in marriage, or else you you know you should start looking for somebody else that's. Who, serious and this that and the other thing and for me man i need to live with the woman if i'm gonna block horns and like right, right. Go, go that route we we need to live together for a little bit just to make sure they're even, like you know when well, you how do you somebody, how do you really know a person until you I'm live saying. with them yeah you don't like you may not like the way i brush my teeth or swallow my you know water or you may not like the way I fold my clothes. Like, you know, people are, they can be bicker on the like tiniest little things. And when you live with somebody, you can kind of catch a feel and an idea of their lifestyle versus yeah. yours, you know? So she said, uh, yeah, my parents aren't going to go for that. And, you know, and I was like, and how, like, how old was she? She was, uh, like early 30s at the time this was a while back That's, but isn't that crazy your early 30s your parents have done and i get the culture but your parents have done exactly what they wanted to do and now you're going you're you're getting ready to you're engaging in a relationship with somebody that's going yeah my parents are not going to be okay with my mm-hmm. relationship with another human being outside of their like what so, what is so- that all, all I was suggesting was, hey, let's just like, you know, live together for a few months and just then we can kind of, you know, 
see if it works. Hours, fill out each other's lifestyle and energies and like, you know, what what makes us tick in a house. Like, because you're not going to want to do some of the same shit. You might need some space, yes. two or three rooms, have a, you know, a guest room or an office. It will, so, how it works, yeah. I, I like being alone so much. The idea of living with a woman, I know this sounds sad, it just sounds fucking exhausting. Yeah. Um, and a lot of it comes from my childhood because I, I have four sisters. So I know what yeah. it's like to live with five women as a young man growing up in a household with all this female energy. And, um, you know, there's a lot of, like, uh, details that come along with women. So... <laughs> You know, Jeez, men, we're, man, we're five simple. women. Yeah, my God mom, my sisters, and they were all different ages, and there was everybody's going through their you know emotional states and cycles and shit, and it was everybody's like, period is synced up. <laughs> it's, it's, the wild, it's the wild, it was the wild west. My, I remember coming home, and my dad would like say, "Listen, uh, Ahmed, it's the the that's the time of the month for your mother and your sister, so don't make too much noise in the house." <laughs> I'm like tiptoeing around my, you know, my house. My, you, you know, you can feel it when women, especially they say if when women live together, they all cycle. Yeah, they cycle each, together. They vibe on each other. Better when I was really hoeing around. This is interesting, and I had like a couple of, I had a, a little roller fuck going on, right? <laughs> um, they uh. the girls they weren't living together, but they all sync. They're all period kind of synced up through me and they were in separate places. So they were still so the, all having their period. Of- you're the grand, you're the grand poobah of, of pure. <laughs> but it, it, it's weird because it like, happens. It's- no, I just, I know, no, I'm just, I'm just, I think it's funny because it's almost like you embody this whatever energy, <laughs> what you want to call it. You're, you're like, you're like, what's his name? Who was the, the big brother in uh, Green Mile? Michael Clark Duncan. Mm. Oh, uh, oh, uh, fuck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He would eat all the, and then, yeah, like, yeah, eat all the, <laughs> and then just spit it out, burp. <laughs> <laughs> that, but here's the thing is also what I notice is like, you know, being around Ahmed is, is like, uh, you could tell he kind of has this, this swagger. Where you could tell that he get he 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 has the, the body count that he has is the body count he wants. <laughs> Does that make sense? Mm. It's but I can also see where because he's older he's kind of like eh, you know like uh, oh, no, it, I, I think you know for me it's funny because I'm 52 so yeah. I'm not. We were talking about that. I remember a little bit there were when I was in my 20s, man. I've just. You know, I was real like, hey, what's going on? You know, and, ooh, and like, <laughs> let me get your number and let's, you know, hang out. And I was super, uh, like, just confident and energetic. Yeah, yeah. You know, and, and I wasn't afraid of rejection. And then as you get older, you know, you just start, you see the girl walk by and then you, in your head, you go, oh, yeah, I'm going to go talk to her. And then your, your, right. and then your legs go, nah, we're good. <laughs> <laughs> we're just going to kick it. Well, you can think about it, but we ain't going anywhere. <laughs> it's just like it's you know a lot saying? of exhaustion. Your mind's like, that oh, seems yeah. like it's going to be a lot of work. Dude, true, true story. I, I was living in New York, uh, I want to say it was 2017. And beautiful day. I was in the, in the West Village. And it was like Model Central. You know, all the supermodels are hanging out. And they're just walking right past my house, like, every morning, getting their smoothies across the street. In the afternoon, getting their coffee, they're just everywhere. And there was one, one that I saw walking across the street. We were going opposite directions, but we both looked at each other. And we had that, like, you know, when a man sees a woman look at him in such a way where you go, oh, she's into me. Or you, yeah, think, yeah, yeah. Or you think, you know, she is. And, and we made eye contact and she gave me that, you know, mm, or whatever, mm-hmm. right? And then we keep on walking, and in my head I go, you should turn around and go talk to her. She gave you, you know, she's across the street, so I have to run across the street and go down, like, half a block. So I'm like, how fast can I get there? I'm in my head, like, is, it, is this physically possible in the next 45 seconds? 
Because women will give you a window. And if you don't jump in that window, they think you're a fucking pussy. Well, so she gave know, me, she gave me, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to push back on that, too. Sometimes if, you, if a woman... Like, I remember, like, Harry had this chick that was coming, that came up to, um, this was years ago, years ago, mm -hmm. Harry had this chick, and I was, he was, he text, like, text messenger back, and he would call me, yo, I got this, what I'm gonna say, what, what should I say, and I would well, say this, say that, say this, say that, say that, it was back and forth, so, but the, the, the energy that I was giving, it's like Cyrano de Bergerac, but my energy is different then clearly my energy is different than Harry's, right? So I kind of gave him game that I would have gave, right? And then when she showed up, it was Harry there, right? Mm -hmm. So I said to Harry, I remember, do you remember this, Harry? I oh, said, when I she yeah, I don't remember in, it. Uh, I, I, when I she remember. comes in, <laughs> pin her against the wall, push her against the wall, and put your tongue in her mouth, right? And he was like, and I was like, look, you got to... You you have to do that, and he was like, yeah yeah yeah. I was like Harry, you gotta you mm. got you gotta do it, and he was like, so me and Harry have a hit history of him asking me for advice and then him doing a portion like he well, he'll especially go like, I'm back just, in the day, yeah. I'm gonna have two slices of that. I'm not gonna do the. I'm not gonna. I'm not eating the whole pie, but what mm. happens is. The dynamic is that you create this kind of sexual energy that the only response by shoving your tongue. <laughs> it, well, if, but I mean, if you, if, here's my thing: if you, if you saw the text messages, it was, yeah, well, I want to. So that, that's that's to to coattail your point. That's where I was kind of going with the story. Was I knew I had a, a, a few seconds to yes, to yes, to yes. Turn, to turn around across the street and get this girl and go talk to her. Otherwise, yeah. if I wait, if I waited too long, the opportunity's then, gone. Know, yeah, yeah. Like if so, that but that's what I did, and that's why I fucked up. So I, I, yeah. I turned around. And I said in my head, "I'm going to go. I'm going to go. You know, talk to this gal." As mm -hmm. soon as I turn around, after I decided this, I don't know. It was probably a few seconds too late. She was already three blocks down the fucking street. So now I'm like, ah, uh, she's already. That thought, like, now I got to start jogging, you know what I'm saying, to catch up, and I don't want to be out of breath when I get there. And, and then uh -huh. I'm like, nah, and then I'm like, nah, it's cool, it wasn't meant to be. And then I turn around, and I'm like, no, go talk to her. Now she's like, you know, six blocks down the fucking street, right? <laughs> so now I'm just like, it's fucking over, just keep walking. Yeah. And then my ego said, no, bro, run. And bro, I fucking ran across the street. I ran, it was about, I think, four or five blocks, maybe, maybe six. It seemed like a, several blocks. And I just did like a soft sprint. You know, it took me about about a minute, minute and a half to get to her. Uh. And I ran up on her, and I tapped her on her shoulder. She turned around, and I go, hey, remember me from six, six blocks ago? We, we did the, remember that, you know, remember, yeah. remember me? And she was looking at me like I was fucking crazy, bro. Fucking grabbed her water bottle. Can I have some of that? Like, yeah. <laughs> it is oh, in your face. <laughs> but and I said, and then she just kind of looked at me like I was crazy and kept on walking. And that's when I, that was uh -huh. the last time, that was the last time I, I've like, you know, seen a girl or met a girl and then made a decision to like, uh -huh. you know, pursue it. Well, you know, you know, it's funny because I was saying with, with Harry, I was like, you gotta like when you when you gotta be aggressive in, up front, yeah. You, because yeah. you, I've given you all this aggressive. This is it. So what happens also is sometimes we will think, well, uh, well, now we have that window, and now she's changed her mind. But also, what happens? I think a lot of times we don't see that beautiful women are very insecure, and so. There, that window of openness is there, but if it if you don't take it, it's not always like he's a pussy, but it's like you rejected me, and then they resent you because you rejected them in that moment, and so they won't give you a chance because you rejected them. And so, you know, the chick came in, and I I was you know I was 
I was, you know, spitting the Willie Bobo. Like he could have, like he could have got blown in the fucking in the hallway, right? Because I was, and she was coming back with it was like hot and heavy. And then she came in, and Harry was like, "Hey, you want?" Well, first drink. of all, you were hold on, hold on, Dante, hold on. You were not there, so that impression. We were like, hey, you want some hey, tea? That's none of that happened. None of those things happened. Hey, no. You want to make a cheese grill? <laughs> I like your impression of of Harry. Yeah. Like, hey, hey, guys. Hey, 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 hey everybody. Hey, 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 hey. hey you want to play Call of Duty? Yeah. Hey, yeah. Man, <laughs> You like cheese grill? <laughs> that's, that's that's not how it went down exactly, but suffice to say, I was wrong. You were right, so there's that. I should have been more aggressive with that. Opportunity you lost. You didn't, make, you didn't make a cheese grill? I did not. I did not invite her in to make a cheese grill, no. To uh, grill cheese, I actually. I don't know who calls it a cheese grill, by the way. <laughs> but that aside, no. Cheese grill, grilled cheese, none of those things were offered. I didn't. I didn't ask her to uh, wear my plin, uh, my my pledge pin, any of those things. But I just wasn't as aggressive as I should have been. You wear my letterman jacket. No, no, Let's I didn't. Get but a malt. <laughs> I'm <laughs> But I was not aggressive. I didn't act in the moment. I was. I was because I was still in that mindset of not taking risks, and uh, it had to be the right moment, and blah blah blah. And I'm scared of the rejection. It is fear of the rejection at the time, you know? And it's certainly yeah. not the way I yeah. would handle it now, and I regret it. But it all worked out in the end. At at this point, dating, but dating dating women is like really like being a stand up comedian, purely because of the rejection. Mm. Mm, yeah, and yeah. and so it's like we're always looking for that adoration, for that acceptance, right? For that re, you know that relief of like having some sort of normality. People think you're maybe you're funny, so they laugh with you. And if you can get a girl to laugh, mm. uh, I mean, I'm not the most fucking handsome guy on the planet, but I've seen some ugly I, motherfuckers. I disagree. Who are funny. Oh. I disagree. I disagree. You, guys, you really have to, by the way, if you're listening to this uh, on iTunes, you should go to the YouTube page to see the motion that Dante and Ahmed have taken. The, the, mm, the pouty, the pouty, the pouty, the pouty motion. The pouty oh. girl motion that they're both doing. I literally dated a girl who, that's where that like mannerism came from. That's I mean, a lot of girls, a lot of girls do, but she's next level. Like she's super. Like, oh, <laughs> oh. I'm hungry. I'm tired. I'm sleepy. Love me. Hug me. Oh. I used to always say to her, "Are you fucking Gollum from Lord of the Rings? <laughs> what is that mannerism?" Oh. That's funny. What about so what about you... now, Dante? Do you have a steady gal right now, or are you just kind of? Uh, you know, I, I, I mean, uh, kind of broke up my girlfriend. My wife's kind of pleased about that, though, so she's good with it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I mean, you know, like, I don't know if I, I didn't tell you, I didn't get into this with you, but my son, my wife took my son to England. She Ooh. just snatched him and took you him. You did tell me that. I think you did tell me that. Yeah, it's, so it's like a funky situation, but one of the things that I realize is, you and you've know, been celibate since, right, Dante? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you've abstained, you know. You've, 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 you've uh, it's been a year and a half, right? Oh, Dante's just looking. Mm-hmm. At me. It's, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Pouty face again from Dante. How hard did we laugh that night with Dante? Uh, you yeah. just going back and forth. Oh my God. I, that's when I was like, oh, I, I, as soon as that happened, I was like, I'm going to know this guy for the rest of my life. I said, <laughs> as soon as that laugh happened, I was like, oh, I will know this dude. I will know this dude forever. For, oh, for... <laughs> we laughed. We laughed our asses off. Oh I haven't my had a good God. laugh like that in a while, actually. So that was good for me. Because, you know, the thing about being a comedian is that we, we you know, we want to laugh too, right? And so we're always trying to, you know, make people laugh and please people with laughter. And then, like, oftentimes, yeah. we we um we don't receive enough. We miss ourselves. it. Yeah, yeah. So it's also harder laugh. to make us laugh too. It's just exactly. harder. That yeah, yeah. Too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't laugh at normal I can, shit. No, I, I get it. 
Harry, I get Harry. Like Harry is like so, so you know when your act is layered and nuanced, right? When you're you know you're doing bits that are layered and nuanced. So I can only get I get Harry laughing for stupid shit. Yeah, it has like, to be I'll really him, dumb. I'll be like, "That's what your mom said." <laughs> and that's <laughs> It's just, it's stupid. Mike's off it with a mom joke. Yeah. <laughs> or just something stupid. That's what she said, bro. And then I'll get him because he doesn't expect any, you know, it's so lowbrow. Because you're He's parody, like, you're parodying lowbrow humor is what you're doing. This is like office bro, style humor. I get I get uh comments on some of my clips, my my comedy clips online where people <laughs> literally call me a seventh grader. They're like, that's oh. joke. <laughs> That's the joke of a seventh grader. I'm like, all comedians are are seventh graders. Uh, yeah. yeah, we the, the the child in us can't help it, right? <laughs> that's the, that's God, the fun. Godfrey, Godfrey said uh, he was on stage. He said uh, he's talking about drugs or something, and he was talking about eccentric. And he said eccentric sounds like a Decepticon, right? <laughs> sounds like one of the Decepticons. And you know, Godfrey's so fucking tough. He starts doing Optimus Prime voice because he can. Yeah. And he's like, Op- Optimus Prime, they get the cube. And here we have Ascension. <laughs> and he starts doing this thing. And I'm like, why does a 50 year old man have a, 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 a Optimus, Optimus Prime, Prime impression? Just so insane out of his mind. And uh, it, it just was like, it was it was weird because I I just looked like it was such a so I mean it was so comfortable in his skin, which is interesting to me because and I, I think probably because of the comic comedy too, because I do a lot of consultations and a lot of the consultations I get are from Indian dudes and Muslim dudes because it you know the social dynamics of the traditional social dynamics are kind of left. Like it, it's set up, you know what I mean? So you don't really have to have game. You, I mean, you still, you have, I mean, if you get a guy who's, even if a guy who's like. Well, it's almost like you're not the, supposed to have game. It's almost like it's inappropriate yeah. also culturally at times to have that yeah. level of game. But you get young guys who don't, they don't, they don't have a, it's like, the, it's not like your father's teaching you, yo, let me text stuff for you, right? And then what was, was that movie with uh, Will Smith and Kevin um, Hitch? Hitch, you're like yeah, you're like you're like Hitch. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Definitely. Dante will hook you up. You're like Hitch. Uh, Hitch, yeah. Hitch with an edge. Two 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 moves on the chessboard, and you get the index sucked. <laughs> but um, yo, let's. What you you got anything you want to plug? We're gonna do a little time in the Patreon where we could really kind of let loose. Um, uh, what, what, anything? I am uh, you know just maybe my Instagram. I'm at I'm at comedy. That's right. Where I, that's where I put most of my stories and posts and things that I, I got coming up. That's probably the easiest. A H M E D A H M E D Ahmed Ahmed comedy uh, on Instagram. How do you- TikTok the Ahmed Ahmed on TikTok. Uh, you guys, are you guys TikToking? Oh yeah, yeah a little bit. Love Not a lot. TikTok's bit. crazy, isn't it? Yeah, I, lo- yeah, I like yeah. it better I watched, than any other one. I watched uh, videos on TikTok for um, six hours one night during the pandemic, like straight. I've done that. Oh, oh, yeah. I, the only time I got up was to go. Get some water and you know take Go a leak, and then you're back in. Yeah, I came right back to my bed, laid down, and I stared at this my phone for six hours straight. And it scared me when I was done because the sun was coming up. I started watching it at, at midnight, and yeah. then about six a.m. about six a.m. the sun started popping up, and I, I suddenly like got nervous. And I I did the calculation. It was like, at at the time they were only doing one minute videos, I believe, and so. I it, I did the math. I watched about like 350 videos. Wow. Jesus, man. Something like that. Well, I I Crazy. do I do enjoy it. If you want to go to my TikTok at Harry Turjanian uh, on TikTok on YouTube, all my social media, and also if you want a relationship consultation, uh, you can email me at advicefromharry at gmail dot com. Um, everything. Yo, Google me, bitch. 
You know what it is. <laughs> he, uh, and the consultations, DanteNero.com, click on consult. You can book me to talk, to, you know, get, get this work done. You get this smoke. Um, GYBB, get your balls back. WWDD, what would Dante do? The sexual revolutions being podcasted. Yo, I love y'all. Check us on the Patreon side, www.patreon.com uh, slash manschool202. Later. <laughs>